As we often do on this channel, today we'll be putting together a new system build, doing some glamour shots and running through some tests. But this isn't going to be your normal 9900K build made with all kinds of cutting edge components. No, instead I'm going to be recreating one of the more well known builds that I've ever done on this channel and seeing if it's still got what it takes four years later. Spice up your next build with the new Aquafusion 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler from Enermax. Featuring an all-new addressable RGB pump top design and Enermax's unique square RGB fans, the Aquafusion fits all mainstream AMD and Intel sockets and uses patented shunt channel cold plate technology to keep your CPU running cool. Check out the sponsor link below to learn more or to pick one up today. Depending on how long you've been following my channel, back when it was called S-Tech TV, I built a system that eventually came to be known as Deep Red. It was a monster system for the time, rocking an Intel i7-5820K and dual 980 Ti's. Eventually it was upgraded to a 6900K and GTX 1080's, and that build was featured on EK's website as their build of the month, which was a really cool honor for me back when I had less than maybe 5,000 subscribers or so. But when I first switched over from a fairly basic i5 setup to the X99 Enthusiast platform, in order to make my video editing workflow significantly smoother, the system wasn't super flashy. It had a single 980 Ti and an AIO cooled processor instead of the ridiculous custom loop that I built later on. It had a small single SSD along with a one terabyte hard drive and it was built in the original Fantex and through Evolve. But when I got to reminiscing the other day, I began to wonder if a system like that would still just be fine for the majority of tasks that I do on a daily basis. After all, the 5820K is a highly overclockable six core CPU with hyper threading, and the 980 Ti has about the same horsepower as the still very popular GTX 1070. So although I no longer owned most of the parts that originally that system was built with, I set out to reacquire as many of them as possible. I put the word out on Twitter and to my patrons that I was looking to purchase a 5820K and a 980 Ti. And lo and behold, you guys came through with exactly what I was looking for, including the same model of 980 Ti that I used to have, the MSI Gaming X. Six gigs of VRAM might seem like a small amount today when compared to subsequent 80 Ti cards, like the 11 gigabyte 1080 Ti and 2080 Ti. But don't forget that the 980 Ti was significantly cheaper at launch than either of the follow-ups and was about as powerful as the Titan X Maxwell. For the rest of the system, I picked up an Asus X99 board from a patron. And although this Strix model isn't the same as the Sabertooth that I used to have, it'll be a fine stand in and we shouldn't see any real performance differences between the two. Now, as far as memory goes, I actually had to go out and buy this 32 gig kit from Micro Center as I didn't have any DDR4-2400 anymore in my inventory. Plus the original build featured 32 gigs of red G-Skill Ripjaws 4, so this Ripjaws 5 kit will pay a nice homage. For consistency, we'll again be building in the Fantex Evolve, but this time the new X version instead of the original. I've done a monthly build in this case before and it's quite the sexy beast. I'll be able to match up the lighting to the red on these Corsair AF120 fans, which will provide our airflow as well as some interior illumination. Other parts going in here will be this Ripjaw 750 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply, which I didn't even know existed, but it was on sale at Micro Center, so I picked it up, and an SSD that I haven't yet decided on. We'll keep the spinning rust out of the system for now. Now I won't be doing a build montage here. I saved those for the monthly build series, but when I get all this together, we'll take a closer look at it, as well as performance across a whole suite of benchmarking software. Does the old Haswell E platform still have some life left in it? We're about to find out.
Here is our finished build inside the Evolve X, and I have to say I am very happy with the way it came out. I ended up using the Enermax Lick Fusion 240 AIO for this and uh, adding on those Corsair AF120 fans. The airflow fans from Corsair are not the best as far as static pressure goes, but they should do fine to cool our chip. Uh, I ended up running a 4.2 gigahertz all core overclock on the 5820K, but I was able to keep that at 1.2 volts, so temperatures weren't really an issue at all. As far as our GPU goes, uh, I was able to crank that up plus 175 on the core and plus 350 on the memory. Um, temperatures there also were very good. The airflow in this case is much improved over the original Evolve, especially with these three AF120 fans in the front, really intaking a good amount of cool air and just blowing it right over the graphics card. So. Temps were definitely in check, and I'm certainly happy with the way the system is performing. The memory we just left at 2400, uh, because that was how the original system was set up. It was set up with DDR4 2400. I didn't want to go any higher than that. Uh, it didn't really seem to be a fair comparison if I did. The cables I used here were actually a, an old set that I had used from a previous project. They were made by Joe uh, from Sanctum Sleeving, and they still look excellent. Uh, I'm not sure if Joe is making cables anymore, but if you are, send me over some more of these because these came out really good and they certainly match our color scheme. I did have to switch up the power supply from that Rip Jaws unit that I mentioned earlier. We're gonna use an FSP Hydro PTM, uh, still 750 watts. Uh, the reason I switched over to this was because this actually has two EPS eight pin connectors that you could use with it, whereas the Rip Jaws only had one. And our motherboard needs a four pin and an eight pin. So for that reason, I had to switch it out. Not really a big deal, still the same wattage, not gonna affect performance in any way. For an SSD, went with a Crucial MX300. It's a 525 gig uh, SATA M.2 SSD. So not super, super fast, but still an SSD and should be just fine for everything that we wanna run. Now we get to what actually the point of this video was, which is to see how this hardware from 2015 actually stands up to my current benchmarking suite. What I did was I put this up against the same tests that I use for my monthly build. So that's Cinebench, both the OpenGL and the CPU test, RealBench, Firestrike Time Spy, and then a bunch of games. I can definitely say that uh, running all these tests at 1440p, this system ran into a few problems with the newer titles. Uh, Metro Exodus at 1440p Ultra, only ran at 38.12 frames per second. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1440p very high, 53 frames per second. So with some tweaking, that should probably be able to, we should be able to get that over 60. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, only 45 frames per second. And Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 53 frames per second, all at 1440p, all at uh, ultra, basically max settings. There's definitely some stuff you could do to adjust the settings if you really wanted to play at 1440p with these new titles. I would recommend though that if you were going to be running something like Metro Exodus on a system like this with a 980 Ti that you probably bump it down to 1080p Ultra. That would give you a much better experience than turning the detail settings all the way down on 1440p. And obviously your frame rates are going to be super dependent on what changes you make. But you could definitely make it happen. You could game with this system on modern modern titles with no problem. You just might have to make a few compromises here and there. With that being said though, there were certainly some tests that this system still aces with no problem. Far Cry 5, 1440p high, 70 frames per second. Unigen Heaven, 1440p, 90 frames per second. Strange Brigade, 1440p, 82 frames per second. And For Honor, 82 frames per second. As well. So depending on what you want to play, something like this may or may not be completely serviceable for you. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad that this system still does well. It was not a cheap build when I made it back in the day. And it was something that I was really proud of that I was able to put together and use uh, for a long time on the channel before we moved on to uh, the Broadwell e-chips and then X299 and Threadripper and whatever else we're using now. So I am really pleased with the way this came out and I think that it could still stand up to a lot of what people today might 
throw at it. So keep that in mind. If you guys are looking to build a new system and maybe you get some good deals on some older hardware, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have to sacrifice on quality. You could probably still run your favorite games just fine. So that's it for this video, guys. Leave a thumbs up down there if you'd like to check out the merchandise store for cool hoodies like this and t-shirts and mugs and whatever else we got in there. As always, thanks for watching. Get subscribed if you are not already and I will see you next time.